Morgan Ashley Fox, a soul born on the 22nd of August 1991 in Marion County, Ohio, entered the world as a cherished addition to the family of Cynthia Rowe and Robert Fox. Growing up in a large family, Morgan was surrounded by the love and camaraderie of 12 siblings. From her early days, Morgan's warmth and kindness shined through, making her a beacon of joy within her family. In the transformative year of 2012, at the age of 20, Morgan welcomed her first and only child, a daughter named Amelia. From that moment on, Amelia became the center of Morgan's world, bringing immeasurable joy and purpose to her life. Her professional trajectory took a significant turn when she joined FedEx Ground, marking a pivotal moment in her career. Morgan's commitment and hard work didn't go unnoticed, and she steadily climbed the ranks. In 2019, she achieved the position of Operations Manager, a testament to her leadership and organizational capabilities. Working the early morning shift at FedEx, a schedule that commenced between 2.30 and 3 a.m., Morgan demonstrated not only her work ethic, but also her adaptability to challenging hours. On October 28, 2020, the tragic events of the fateful day unfolded in the early hours outside Morgan's residence on Fraser Avenue in Plain Township, Ohio. The sun barely touched the horizon when Morgan's boyfriend found her lifeless in their driveway, slumped over the steering wheel of her car. Two bullets, fired with calculated precision, had pierced the silence and shattered the dreams of a life cut far too short. The air held the acrid sting of gunpowder and the weight of unimaginable grief. According to official records, Morgan was ambushed while preparing to leave for work. The grim discovery was made at approximately 6.30 a.m. by her boyfriend upon his return from his own workplace. Realizing the gravity of the situation, he promptly called 911 for assistance. I came out here and she's laying in her front seat. Oh my god. You doing okay, sir? No, 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 no. I understand. We're going to get you some help here as quick as possible. Unfortunately, it was already too late. The investigation revealed that Morgan had been subjected to a horrifying act of violence, having been shot twice in the head. What made this heartbreaking situation even more chilling was the realization that none of her personal belongings were stolen during the incident. This absence of robbery suggested that Morgan's murder was not a random act, but rather a deliberate and targeted execution. The community was left in shock and mourning, grappling with the loss of a young woman whose life was abruptly and violently taken. The circumstances surrounding Morgan's tragic end only deepened the sense of grief leaving loved ones in the community searching for answers and justice in the wake of such a senseless act. Detectives, sworn to uphold justice, descended on the scene, sifting through the fragments of normalcy shattered by the crime. They meticulously studied the tire tracks imprinted in the damp earth, the phone clutched in Morgan's hand, and the haunting silence of the surrounding houses. Every piece of evidence, no matter how small, became a whisper in the dark. The revelation that her 29-year-old co-worker and FedEx operations manager, Jason Allen McDermott, was identified as the perpetrator within a week speaks to the thoroughness of the investigative process. So, just from looking through you guys' text messages, I will tell you that there is a very different story there compared to what you portray as just being friends. I'm telling you, I know what it is when I read it. Okay. And you may have been playing along with the friendship, but, and I 100% believe that you're a level her. There's an infatuation there going on on your end, maybe not necessarily her end. I never saw it as such. That before I said when I was questioning whether or not I felt anything about her, yes, I did inquire with people without thinking about it. I was like, maybe I do have feelings for her. I wasn't sure, and I was like, I was pondering it for a while, and then eventually I came to the conclusion that, no, I just really care about her. The reported falling out between Morgan and McDermott, leading to suspicions surrounding their relationship, highlights the often complex and personal dynamics that can contribute to such tragic events. Their inquiries led them to the doorstep of Morgan's workplace, FedEx. There, they encountered Jason McDermott, 
a colleague harboring a chilling secret beneath his seemingly unassuming demeanor. Whispers of inappropriate behavior towards Morgan swirled around him, casting a shadow of suspicion. Yet, McDermott presented an airtight alibi, a web of self-preservation spun with calculated precision. They delved deeper, their eyes piercing through the facade McDermott had so carefully constructed. Tire tracks near the crime scene matched his car, his online activity reeking of an obsessive fixation on Morgan, and his phone revealed conversations laced with disturbing darkness. His carefully crafted alibi began to unravel like a threadbare sweater, exposing the chilling truth beneath. According to the investigation, the police became aware of McDermott at the start of the investigation. He had worked with Fox at FedEx, and at one time the pair had been friends. However, Fox ended their friendship when he became obsessed with her. Other colleagues told the police that McDermott had shown an unhealthy interest in Fox and continually talked about her to others. At least one of the colleagues had told McDermott to back off from Fox and find something else to do with his life. About three weeks before Fox's murder, she had left her phone unintended and McDermott and another colleague had taken the phone and gone through all her photos and messages. Fox was distraught at the incident and told him she no longer wanted to speak to him, and she began looking for another job. The police matched the tire prints in the neighbor's yard to McDermott's car and learned that he had washed his car on the day of the murder. The cops also found more evidence of McDermott's obsessive behavior. He had surreptitiously taken photos and videos of Fox. He also regularly talked to a friend online, where he discussed having a fantasy sexual relationship with Fox. With each meticulously gathered piece of evidence, the puzzle began to take shape. Morgan's text messages revealed McDermott's persistent advances, a song of rejection met with the crescendo of his murderous rage. The digital breadcrumbs he left online painted a gruesome picture of a calculated killer. On the grim morning of October 28, 2020, Jason Allen McDermott orchestrated a chilling plan of attack. Parking his car in the yard of one of Morgan Fox's neighbors, he lay in wait for her to emerge. As Fox approached her car, preparing to leave for work, McDermott ambushed her, rushing towards her and callously firing two shots into her head. The brutality of the act was as swift as it was devastating, abruptly ending the life of the 29-year-old. After the heinous crime, McDermott swiftly fled the scene, accelerating out of the neighbor's yard. The hurried escape left a trail of muck sprayed over his car and a nearby fence, adding a chaotic and disturbing element to the aftermath of the execution-style murder. The community, already reeling from the shocking details of Morgan Fox's tragic end, was left grappling with the brutality of the ambush and the swift, calculated actions of the perpetrator. McDermott was sentenced to life in prison, a hollow echo of the life he so brutally extinguished. While justice may have been served, the sting of Morgan's absence remained. Her daughter, robbed of her mother's embrace, became the poignant face of a tragedy that stole a life and scarred a community. The sentencing of Jason Allen McDermott brought forth poignant expressions of grief and anger from Morgan Fox's family. During the proceedings, Fox's eight-year-old daughter paid a heartbreaking tribute to her late mother, expressing disbelief at the reality of monsters and condemning McDermott's actions. She stated, I thought monsters weren't real, but you proved me wrong and you hurt so many people. You hurt me and the people I love. Morgan's father, Bob Fox, directed strong words at McDermott, telling him to rot in hell. The emotional impact of the loss was palpable in these raw and powerful statements, reflecting the deep pain inflicted upon Morgan's loved ones by the heinous crime. Judge Natalie Haupt, presiding over the case, highlighted McDermott's apparent lack of remorse as a crucial factor in her decision to deny the option of parole after 23 years. This underscored the gravity of McDermott's actions and the profound impact it had on the victim's family and the community. The sentencing marked a somber chapter in the pursuit of justice for Morgan Fox, offering a measure of closure for her grieving loved ones while ensuring accountability for the perpetrator. The Morgan Fox case is a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the enduring power of darkness. But it is also a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, the unwavering quest for justice, and the love that burns even in the face of tragedy. Morgan's story serves as a beacon of hope, urging us to fight for a world where darkness is chased away by the unwavering light of justice and the echoes of a life. 
though tragically cut short, will forever resonate in the hearts of those who loved her.